As the Pittsburgh Pirates were in the hunt for their first playoff berth since 1992, they, like any team in competition, were in some trade rumors. Let's look back at some that might have been forgotten from the summer of 2013. At the 2013 MLB trade deadline, the Pittsburgh Pirates would look to be on course for their first season in 20 years, where not only did they reach at least 82 wins, but also made the playoffs. Like any team in contention, the Pittsburgh Pirates were in a handful of trade rumors. Any team looking to compete would do. Most of the rumors the Pittsburgh Pirates were a part of were for outfield-capable sluggers, one of which was, and the most prominent, was Giancarlo Stanton. The then 23-year-old right fielder was seen as an outstanding young slugger. Through an injury-limited 280 plate appearances, Stanton had a two fifty six average, 375 on base, 491 slugging on July 31st, with 13 long balls and a 144 WRC+. He also walked 15.4% of the time after walking just 9.2% of the time the year prior. This was all after a season where Stan hit for a 290 average, 361 on base, 608 slugging with 37 long balls, and a 153 WRC+. Plus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Despite his below average defensive numbers the year prior, Stanton had a plus 22 DRS, 13 range runs above average, and a 6.9 UCR 150 in the three years combined. Not only were the Pittsburgh Pirates connected to Stanton, but so were the Boston Red Sox. Well, the Marlins ended up holding on to Stanton at the time, and why wouldn't they? Stanton was part of a core that consisted of Jose Fernandez, Henderson Alvarez, Marcelo Zuna, Christian Yelich, Nathan Navaldi, with many top prospects on the cusp of MLB action like Justin Nicolino, Adam Conley, Jake Marisnik, Andrew Haney, and JT Romuto in the minors. I... <clears throat> if you remember, I think one of the podcasts in the past... We, we talk about that time the Pittsburgh Pirates almost acquired Giancarlo Stanton. But Stanton wasn't the only 2012 All-Star the Pittsburgh Pirates had showed interest in. They also looked into angel slugger Mark Trumbo. In 2012, Trumbo hit for a solid 268 average, 317 on base, 491 slugging with 32 long balls, and a 124 WRC+. Plus. Now, Trumbo wasn't as effective of a defender in the outfield compared to Stanton. He had a minus one DRS with half point five range runs above average and 0.8 UZR, but he spent a good amount of time at first base in 2012 as well. At the July 2013 trade deadline, Trumbo was putting up solid slugging numbers, batting for a 246 average, 310 on base, 468 slugging, with 23 long balls and a 222 isolated slugging percentage. He also had a 116 WRC+. Plus. Again, he had solid but unimpressive outfield defensive numbers with minus 2 DRS, 1.4 range runs above average, a negative 0.3 UZR mark, but he saw most of his innings at first base where he was a much better fielder, minus 1 DRS, 2.6 range runs, 3.2 UZR. The Pittsburgh Pirates were also connected to two division rival outfielders in Cubs corner outfielders Nate Shearholtz and David DeJesus. The longtime Giants outfielder Nate Shearholtz would have been a good fit to fix uh, the Pirates' lack of power problem. The left-handed batter was hitting for a strong 269 average, 328 on base, 510 slugging line, blasted 14 long balls, had a 241 ISO, and 129 WRC+. Plus. Although not a great fielder, he wasn't a detriment either with 0 DRS and 1.4 range runs and negative 2.9 UCR in 2013. While David DeJesus wasn't as much of a slugger as the other three names I've brought up, he still had a productive batting line of a 273 average, 333 on base, 455 slugging and 119 WRC plus. Where he lacked in power, DeJesus made up in his fielding with minus 1 DRS, 1.6 range runs, and a 2.1 UZR. Most of his innings came from center field and rated as a much better defender in left field with experience in right field. One 
The last notable outfitter that the Bucks were connected to during this time was White Sox Alex Rios. The former two-time Toronto Blue Jays All-Star was batting just 272, a 323 on base, 425 slugging, accumulating a 102 WRC+. Plus. However, the veteran was still a very good base runner, swiping 22 bags and being worth three base running runs above average. At this point in Rios' career, the outfitter was an average to below average fielder with minus 4 DRS, minus 2.1 range runs, and 3.7 UZR. He was still very good at throwing runners out with 8 outfield assists and 4.6 arm runs above average. Regardless, the Pirates could have used any of these players. Both first base and right field were positions where they struggled at. The Pirates' first basemen were batting 251, a 327 on base, 426 slugging, with 17 home runs and a 113 WRC+. Solid numbers, but the Pirates were lacking power as a team, ranking 19th in the MLB in slugging percentage. In right field, Pirates field, right fielders hit for a 248 average, 304 on base, 389 slugging with 18 home runs. But right field first base big time sluggers weren't the only kind of players the Pittsburgh Pirates were involved in talks for. They were also talking to the Houston Astros about one of their starting pitchers, Bud Norris. Norris was an effective pitcher for the Astros, who were 35 and 70, coming into July 31st. Norris had a 3.93 ERA, 3.87 FIP, and 1.41 WHIP in 126 innings of work. Although he had overall unimpressive strikeout 16.6% and walk 8% numbers, he allowed home runs at a solid 0.79 per nine rate. Norris did give up a fair amount of hits, but the Astros' defense was much worse than the Pirates, so it would be likely that he would improve with a better defense. Plus, with more than just one year of control left, he would have made a solid back-of-the-rotation arm. While A.J. Burnett, Garrett Cole, and Francisco Liriano had the first three spots of the rotation on lockdown, the Pirates had lost Wandy Rodriguez and James McDonald to injuries, plus they had just gotten Charlie Morton back from Tommy John surgery in mid-June. Jeff Locke also looked like a solid back-end rotation arm, so getting that fifth spot on lockdown could have really helped. And up until Morton returned, the Pirates had used multiple different arms like Jean-Marc Gomez, Jonathan Sanchez, and Brandon Compton in the fifth spot with varying levels of success. Ultimately, the Pirates did not make any moves at the July 31st trade deadline. In August, however, they added three players to bolster their run in the postseason. The team brought in former American League MVP Justin Morneau from the Twins to play first base, while right fielder Marlon Byrd and catcher John Buck were acquired from the Mets. Now, that might have been a surprise to you to <clears throat> you sort of think back about seven years ago that the Pirates did not acquire anybody at the July 31st trade deadline. Now, obviously, in 2020, things are going to be messed up with whatever a trade deadline may look like if and when we do have a season. But definitely for 2021, the, the hard deadline is now going to be July 31st. It's not going to be the August 31st waiver deadline type deal. No. So if it was 2021, <clears throat> the Pirates would not have Justin Morneau, Marlon Bird, or John Buck. And it definitely would have helped to get another pitcher. But, I mean, the rotation definitely was solid in 2013 uh, in the second half where you had A.J. Burnett, Garrett Cole, Francisco Liriano, Charlie Morton, and Jeff Locke. The first half of the season was definitely interesting using Jean-Marc Gomez, Jonathan Sanchez, and Brandon Compton in that fifth role. They were sort of in and out who had the hot hand up until Charlie Morton got back from Tommy John surgery. But that top three was was excellent when you had A.J. Burnett, Garrett Cole, Francisco Liriano. But when you look at some of the outfitters that they did not acquire, I mean, just imagine the, the, the course of the Pirates franchise had they acquired Giancarlo Stanton. Obviously, you might have had a different outfield in the 2014 and 15 playoff years than Marte McCutcheon Polanco. It might have been Marte McCutcheon Stanton. I, w I wouldn't have been mad with that. Obviously, you wouldn't have had the chance to see Gregory Polanco, 
who is now a key cog of this Pirates team, but definitely that they were very close to acquiring Giancarlo Stanton. Would have made for, for, for quite the outfield in Pittsburgh, although they did have quite the outfield with Marte McCutcheon and Polanco. While the 2015 Pittsburgh Pirates were one of the most memorable teams in franchise history, relief pitcher Radames Liz was a forgettable member of the 2015 Pittsburgh Baseball Club. The 2015 Pittsburgh Pirates won 98 games. That is something that fans of the Bucks will not soon forget. Something many fans have probably already forgotten, however, is that reliever Radames Liz was a member of the 2015 club. Liz signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates on December 13, 2014. The Dominican righty signed with the Bucks in hopes of Ray Searge being able to help him get his MLB career back on track. Unfortunately, things would not work out that way. Prior to making his MLB debut with the Baltimore Orioles in 2007, Liz was one of the top pitching prospects in Baltimore's farm system. His struggles at the MLB level would begin immediately, though. After spending most of the 2009 season in the minors, Liz was let go by the Orioles. After being designated for assignment, he was claimed off waivers by the San Diego Padres. Liz made 22 starts at the AAA level for the Padres before being released in January 2011. Liz then went to the KBO where he found success. After three strong seasons in Korea, he signed a minor league contract with the Toronto Blue Jays prior to the start of the 2014 season. However, <clears throat> he never pitched a game at the MLB level with Toronto. Then in 2015, Liz took his stab at reviving his career in Pittsburgh. He made 14 relief appearances with the Pittsburgh Pirates and struck out 25.5% of batters faced. However, he struggled with control, walking 11.3% of batters faced, and he allowed four home runs in just 23 in a third innings of work. When it was all said and done, he posted a 4.24 ERA and 4.98 FIP with the Pirates before being designated for assignment on May 25th. After being DFA'd, Liz went on to pitch at AAA Indianapolis in 16 games, 10 of which were starts. He posted a 1.40 ERA and a 2.2 FIP. He would be re-added to the MLB roster on September 1st before being DFA'd once again on September 15th. After pitching in Japan in 2017, Liz signed a minor league deal with the Milwaukee Brewers in November 2017. He would pitch 22 and a third innings at the AAA level for the Brewers before being released on June 1st, 2018. The 2019 season saw Liz Give it a shot in yet another country. This time he took his talents to the Chinese Professional Baseball League. After re-signing with the Lamingo Monkeys in January 2020, he was released from his contract due to a herniated disc in his back and he is currently not signed anywhere. So, Rodames Liz, his career is definitely interesting to follow. And as we just went over in the past couple minutes, he is quite the journeyman internationally in the States. I mean, if you just look back, so he was a top prospect with the Orioles coming up in 2007. Was awful, so he spent all of 2008, 2009 in the minors and was let go by the Orioles. Okay, so then we get to January 2011, where Liz is picked up by the Padres. He makes 22 starts at the AAA level and then is released again. So he decides, okay, it's, it's obviously not working. I didn't even make it to the majors this time with the Padres. So I might as well, you know, try out this KBO thing, see what's going on over there. So he had three strong seasons there. He's like, okay, I'll come back to the United States now. I'm ready. So he signs a minor league contract with the Toronto Blue Jays prior to the start of the 2014 season. And this must, must have been gut-wrenching for Madonna's. He didn't even make a single appearance at the MLB level with Toronto. So that's when... He went to the fixer of all pitchers, Ray Uncle Ray Searage, in Pittsburgh. And uh, it, he struck out a lot of batters. That is what the, the thing that I remember most about Radames Liz is, I mean, he struck out a quarter of the batters he faced, but he also walked over a tenth. Giving up four home runs and 23 innings of work. Eh, it's not too good, but the 4.24 ERA is not terrible. The 4.98 FIP. Uh, definitely room for improvement there. But uh, May 25th, 
Huntington Hurdle said bye-bye Radamus, and they DFA'd him. But 